We're back on the 86 Dodge Daytona Turbo Z Carroll Shelby edition. This thing, we got about 100 miles on a fresh build and we're getting some bugs out of it. Working on some leaks, working through some small issues. I think we've got a PCB issue on the thing and we're just kind of methodically going through. You're going to find stuff on a new build, so let's dig into it. Now, for those of you who follow along, you'll remember that we had an oil leak coming out of the turbo drain um, for the return, the oil return on the turbo. <clears throat> we RTV'd that thing. It appears to still be leaking. I'm guessing that's where it's coming from because we've got some oil on the ground. Not a ton of it, but enough to where I think that thing is still leaking. So we're going to check that out. We may have to pull that again. I got some high temperature gasket material we'll use instead of RTV. Our buddy Steven Seal over at TurboDodgeParts.com told us that the room temperature vulcanization cream may not have been the way to go on that. So we're going to try that. I've got a weird I've got an antifreeze leak, it would appear, in a real weird spot. And I'm thinking it's probably just from the uh, puke tank because the puke tank is empty. So if we look at the radiator, if this thing is totally full still, I'm just going to not run that puke tank. Yeah, we're, we're full. I don't, I don't think that's anything of consequence. I think that's probably from the puke tank. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll wipe that up. Main issue is the oil leak. And <clears throat> this thing, if it sits, it's the weirdest issue. Got a brand new turbo. New rings, new bottom end bearings, new head. And if it sits for, I don't know, a month or more and you start it up, it smokes like turbo's bad, like crazy for like a minute or two. And then it goes away and it'll never smoke again until you let it sit for another couple months. I looked into some forums. It's, it's possible that our turbo build has something wrong with it, but I, I doubt it. Uh, that was a TurboDodgeParts.com deal as well. So I'm assuming that that turbo is, is built well. Anything's possible. Stuff happens. Um, but I'm thinking, the more research I do, this PVC on this deal is so cobbled that um, I'm wondering if that's our issue. I'm shaking this thing. I don't really hear... Well, I guess I do hear that ball moving around. I think what I'm going to do, though, is pull this thing plug off the back of the um, throttle body where it goes into the throttle body here. Plug off down here by the turbo where it goes in there. And plug off the air box. And then i am probably do like a catch can for this. So we're going to start looking into that, seeing what we can figure out there as well. A spider of PCV stuff pulled out of here. Not a great design in general in these cars. Um, we got to plug off the back of the throttle body. Uh, I got some various hoses here. I think I'm just going to take some of this fuel hose, put a screw through it, put a bolt through it with some RTV and snub that off. When I put this thing back together, I mean, it's electrical taped. Yes, you, you can hear the ball inside that PCV valve. So technically that valve's probably good, but everything is just loose fitting, taped up. It's junk. So can't trust any of that. So we're just going to build our own system. And that'll be one more thing checked off the list as to what could be causing this issue. And if this doesn't fix it, I'll tell you one thing. After freshly building this whole deal, I'm not pulling that turbo anytime soon. So I'm just going to live with it. But we're going to at least take a stab at this and uh, make sure we can't, uh, can't get it fixed. All right, throttle body we got sealed off. Pretty simple. Just a hose with a uh, bolt with RTV to seal it off. Hose is probably a hair too long, but I'm gonna try that. So we're good there. And now we're gonna move on to the turbo side here and get this plugged off. So I didn't have a plug this size. This is what goes into the turbo. Um, so we're just gonna do the same deal we did on the throttle body. Piece of hose, a bolt with some RTV, thread seal this guy, put it all together and throw it back in that turbo. So. I think that's gonna be the key. Got me a piece of diesel hose here. All right, she's built. This end goes into the turbo. This end's blocked off. Uh, if this works, we can get ourselves a, an actual plug that's this size. But for now, we're in the testing phase here. 
So we're gonna put some uh, thread sealing around her. So we got our throttle body plugged off. We got our turbo fitting plugged off. And I went ahead and ordered a cheapy Amazon catch can. Uh, the ports in the catch can are 3 ace inside diameter, and these guys are 5 ace. Uh, the guy coming off the head, or the valve cover, and the guy going into the air box. So I uh, bought two barb connectors, so we're going to do a catch can. We're going to go from 5 ace. Reduce it down to three eighths, go to the catch can, come out of the catch can at three eighths, another barb up to five eighths, and then into here. Uh, so we're gonna implement a catch can instead of a, uh, just a, putting a filter on there. I guess I could just throw a filter on there. I don't love that idea. Um, and that'll eliminate the need for a PCV at all. Well, I was second guessing myself. So I called my good buddy, Steven, over there at turbodarchparts.com and made sure that I can plug this off. And I wasn't even thinking, this is before, this is the elbow before the turbo that this that this is on. So that won't hurt anything to plug it off. So double checked with him. The reason I bring that up is, <laughs> I, I, while I was on the phone with him, I mentioned the IAC and he has one uh, with the uh, throttle position sensor, the whole assembly there. So heck yeah. We're going to have one of those come, and he's going to ship it out uh, either today or tomorrow for me. So uh, that is fantastic. So purchase that from him. Our little oil puddle. I may have already said this in this video, but Stephen told me that that RTV wasn't going to seal, and it would appear that he's correct. So we'll pull this uh, here drain valve out up here again. Let me make sure it's that that's leaking and then uh, get her resealed uh oh that is not what's leaking I don't believe huh okay well change plan what is is it simply from is it from the transaxle it's hard to tell if it's dripping down. I know for a fact that that was leaking up there. Now, is it just all the residual that dumped all over the transmission and now it's just dripping off the transaxle? That could be. Or it could be something on the transaxle itself. It would be tough to locate without like steam cleaning the thing. It's not the new steering rack, which is great news. Do not want to do another one of those. Oh, man, we'll take a peek in from the top. I can't really tell. Without cleaning this thing, it almost appears, it's tough to tell, right? Because this transaxle has 30 weight oil in it, 530, and so does the engine. So I can't, I can't tell. Let's see if we can see anything from the top. I mean, we get a bunch of oil from when I fired the thing off without this plug in the head, this bolt right here. Um, so it's got a bunch of oil sitting on top of the transaxle right where I'm shining the light right there. Is that simply leaking down as I drive it? I mean, it could be. That, I guess that could be all it is. Maybe I'll drive it a couple more times and see, because I don't see where that oil is leaking from. Could get in there, try to wipe that down a bit. Okay, got rid of the puddle there. Hmm. Man, that's tough to say. All right, well. What is that piece of blue tape in there for? 
Well, that was just a piece of blue tape. It says valve cover, just from where I was labeling stuff when I was building the car and I had everything apart. Um, I'm gonna clean out up this electric connector right here that's I'm moving right now. I don't like how covered and all that is, but uh, I don't see where this thing's leaking from. There's a bunch of oil here, but I, that was my fault. I fired the car up when I first started it without this bolt to plug that. So it was just gushing oil out. Um, turbo feed line, oil feed line does not appear to be leaking. Uh, that's a coolant. Oil is, well, oil is not visible, so I can't tell if it's leaking or not. But it doesn't appear that it is. It would be way wet, way higher than it is. I don't know, man. We're just gonna run it a few more times and see if it stops leaving a puddle. Maybe that's just residual. So we'll see what happens there. We'll catch up with you guys in a couple of days once the catch can comes in and we'll get all that mounted up. Well, good morning. I'm back and we should have everything I need here to create my little homemade catch can setup. So we're gonna get to work on that. I'm hoping to get this thing to the Ale and Octane event on Daniel Island uh, tomorrow. So usually between 800 and 1500 cars at that event. It's, it's really cool. If you live in the low country area of South Carolina, you should check it out. But we're gonna throw this thing on and see what we come up with. I had a really cool interaction with this car. Um, oh, shoot. It does come with 5 ace fittings as well as 3 ace. I thought it was only 3 ace. Sweet. So I may not have to run the adapter roonies because I think I have the right size fittings. Heck yeah. Um, so I had a really cool interaction with this car. I always do. It's funny. When I take it to the grocery store, three times, all three times I take it to the grocery store, I've had somebody stop and sit outside with their vehicle idling waiting for me to come out of the grocery store to talk to me about this thing very cool um, but the coolest interaction was this guy walked over to me shook my hand and told me that he i made his day seeing the car and that he didn't think he'd ever see one again and how much it means to him and he was getting emotional I, I, i'm i'm thinking he must have had a family member or something that passed away that that had one of these cars and he was just beside himself that's what it's all about right there that's that's what cars are about uh, so that was really cool I'm gonna make sure these fit in this hose before I red seal them and install them this is my 5 ace hose I got oh yeah beautiful All right, I decided I am going to try to do an inline PCV, just so we have it. Which way does this thing go? Okay, that way. Um, the only problem is, so, this thing has these nice clean 5 eighths, which is going to make it so that I don't have to use my adapters, but if I do a PCV, I do have to use my adapters because this guy is 3 eighths. Um, I think I'm going to try to use it though. It won't look as good, but that way it keeps positive crankcase ventilation, you know? So here's what I'm going to do. So that I have to use less adapter roonies, I'm going to change the inlet side of the PCV uh, catch can to the 3 ace fitting so that I can just run 5 ace off the valve cover, adapter rooney, 3 ace, PCV, Back to 3 ace, and that way I can just run 3 ace all the way to the catch can. And then I'll have a 5 ace exit so that we can use this 5 ace hose and go down into the air box here. And I think that'll be the cleanest way to do it. I don't love the way that this looks here, but uh, it's kind of what we got. So uh, shouldn't be too bad. It's going to be pretty much hidden by this intake pipe anyway. I'll figure out where I'm going to mount this catch can. Really the only good spot is like here. So, I don't want to drill holes in my strut tower, so what I think I'm going to do is take this bracket that came with this piece, heat it up, straighten it, bend it further down, and then drill a hole or, or maybe widen one of these existing holes 
so that the strut tower bolt can go through it. So that way we can utilize that existing hole, catch can will mount here, and we won't have to drill into our car. That worked out super sweet, actually. Didn't have to drill into my uh, my car at all, which is fantastic. I hate, hate drilling into this thing, especially the shock tower. It's in such good shape. So I'm gonna cut this hose to length, hook it up to the inlet side. The outlet will be five eighths from the outlet, and I'm just gonna hook it up down to the bottom of the air box. Right. Our homemade PCV catch can setup is hooked up. Pretty clean install there, does not look bad, not in the way of anything. It's serviceable, so you can open her up to empty it. Uh, I think we're in good shape there. Now, only one thing left to do, let's start this thing, see if it smokes. Well, we still had some smoke there. Um, now, was that residual, just burning off? Um, who knows, all right? We'll have to test it a couple times. In talking to Steven, he doesn't think that it's a turbo issue based on the symptom. It only does it when it's been sitting a while. Um, sounds more like valve seals. Um, so, we'll see. Um, we'll run this catch can setup for a little while, see if this clears it up at all. Uh, it didn't seem to smoke as bad as it had in the past. And once it's warmed up, it goes away. Now that idle is still pretty shaky. Uh, it doesn't like to idle until it's totally warmed up. So uh, we've got the IAC coming for that. Hopefully that clears up that idle issue. Uh, it's gonna be a new throttle position sensor and IAC. So can't start this thing and not drive it. Let's take her out for a little test rip. Such a cool little car. Um, ran great. Um, that idle seems to be getting worse. I'm pretty excited to try that idle air control. Hopefully that fixes that idle. Um, it just doesn't want to idle when it's hot. It it will, um, but until it reaches like full temperature, it won't idle. Let's see if we got any oil leakage going on. Let's see. I don't see anything. It's hard to tell. We'll have to uh, we'll have to see if there's a puddle there tomorrow. But right now, doesn't appear to be dripping anything. So that's good. Took it for a uh, you know five or six mile cruise. So next steps for this thing. Steven Sill was kind enough to send us a bore scope with the package that the IAC is coming in. I don't have a bore scope, so very, very kind of him to send one over. We're gonna see if it's valve seals. He said that it does not sound like a turbo issue with the, with the smoke. Um, we'll see if the PCV fixed it. That little bit of burn off might've just been something that was left over uh, sitting in the, in the exhaust. So we'll have to see on that, let it sit for a couple weeks after the show tomorrow, see if it smokes again. But if we put the bore scope down after it sits for a little while and see if there's oil sitting on top of the pistons, That'll tell us that it's valve seals. So hopefully that's not what it is because I don't feel like doing valve seals, although it's an overhead cam. So probably not too bad, really, when you think about it to do them, but we'll see. We'll just keep on trucking with this thing. I mean, 
if it's not valve seals, then we're just going to have to live with it if this PCB doesn't fix it. Uh, it's, it's really not a big deal. It's just when it sits for a long time. So put spark plugs in a little more often. Appreciate you guys watching. We will see you on the next one.